Welcome to Wolvolution's Will's tutorial. Let's start with the basics. I know that this sounds like an obvious question, but the answer may not be as straightforward as you think. In a nutshell, a will is a legally binding document that contains details about who you want your property to go to. But it can also be used to appoint guardians, create trusts, protect property, mitigate inheritance tax and much more. For a will to be legally valid, it must be written down, signed by the testator with intention in the presence of two witnesses and signed by the two witnesses in the presence of the testator. Your chosen witnesses should be independent, which means someone who is not affected by the contents of the will. If a witness is a beneficiary or his or her spouse or civil partner, it will not affect the will's validity, but the witness will forfeit his or her gift in the will under Section 15 of the Wills Act 1837. The terms of a will are only binding if at the time of writing the testator had the required capacity. To pass the capacity test, the testator must be at least 18 years old and be aware of the nature and effect of making a will, the extent of his or her estate, and any potential claims from those who might expect to benefit from the will. Failure to provide adequately for a dependent or other relevant person in your will could lead to a successful claim being brought against your estate under the Inheritance Provision for Family Independence Act 1975. Gifts can be given absolutely, placed in trust or subject to a contingency. For example, I leave £5,000 to my grandson Jimmy absolutely if he attains the age of 21. You can make different types of gifts in your will, including specific gifts, pecuniary gifts, demonstrative gifts, general gifts and residuary gifts. Specific gifts are named gifts which are clearly identifiable from the rest of the estate. For example, I leave my diamond encrusted limited edition Tiffany egg to my sister Selena. As long as you only own one item that fits the description, it will classify as a specific gift. If you no longer own the item at the time of your death, the gift will redeem, in other words fail, and that beneficiary would not get anything in relation to that gift. Pecuniary gifts refer to a specific gift of money to a named person. For example, I leave the sum of £5,000 to my grandson Henry. Unlike a demonstrative gift, it will not specify where the sums are to be taken from. An example of a demonstrative gift is, I leave the sum of £5,000 from my Coventry Building Society account to my granddaughter Helen. The difference between a pecuniary and demonstrative gift is that one identifies a specific fund from which the legacy must be taken and the other does not. Unlike a gift of a specific item, a demonstrative gift will not fail if there is not enough funds in the account to satisfy the gift. An example of a general gift. I leave a laptop computer to my son Harold. If you do not own a laptop computer at the time of your death, there will most likely be a presumption that you intended for the gift to be purchased out of the estate especially if you didn't own one at the time the will was written. The residue of your estate represents anything that is left over once all debts, liabilities and other gifts have been taken care of. If your estate does not have enough value to satisfy all of the above gifts, your residuary beneficiary could be left with nothing. As you may have noticed, it is important that your will is drafted correctly. Words like A and my can make a huge difference in determining whether or not your beneficiary gets his or her gift. It is also important for the terms of your will to be clear. Lack of clarity can cause issues when it comes to interpreting your will later on. Take a look at the following sentence. H 
How would you interpret this sentence if you were an executor? If you like, you can pause this video whilst you have a think about it. For your reference, Veronica and David have a total of 11 grandchildren between them. Here are four options to choose from. One, the residue of the estate should be divided into 13 equal parts amongst Veronica, Anne and Veronica and David's grandchildren. Two, the residue should be divided into four equal shares with Veronica, Anne and David each get in a fourth, with the remaining fourth being divided equally between Veronica's grandchildren. 3. The residue should be divided into four equal shares, with a fourth going to Veronica and Anne, a fourth being shared equally between David's grandchildren, and the remaining fourth being divided between Veronica's grandchildren. 4. The residue should be divided into 10 shares, with Veronica, Anne and David getting one tenth each, and the remaining 7 shares going to each of Veronica's grandchildren. It may surprise you to know that the sentence was the subject of a real-life 2012 case called Sperling v Broadhurst, which had 13 defendants, Veronica, Anne and Veronica and David's respective grandchildren. The court agreed with the executors that the sentence could be interpreted in all four ways. However, the court decided that interpretation one was the most appropriate. It may not be obvious at first glance, but it was the comma between Veronica Broadhurst and David Sperling that caused the problem. So you see, even something as small as punctuation can have a huge impact too. So what happens if you decide that you just can't be bothered to write a will? Well, don't worry. If you don't write a will, the state will write one for you, using the rules of intestacy. Bear in mind that the current rules assume that not much has changed since the 1920s. Let's find out how your assets will be shared out. If you have a spouse or civil partner, and your estate is valued less than £250,000, your spouse or civil partner will get everything. If the value of your estate exceeds £250,000 and you have children or grandchildren and so forth, your spouse or civil partner will get all of your personal property, the first £250,000 of your estate and a life interest in half of the residue. Your children will receive the remaining half of the residue straight away and the other half when your spouse dies. If you do not have any children, your spouse will receive all of your personal property, the first £450,000 of your estate, and half of the residue absolutely. These surviving relatives, in order of priority, will receive the other half of the residue absolutely. Your spouse will receive your entire estate if all of these blood relatives predecease you. If you do not have a spouse or civil partner, your entire estate will pass to your blood relatives in equal shares in the following order of priority. In the case of brothers and sisters and uncles and aunts, their children will be entitled to inherit their parents' share if they predecease you. So what do you think? If you were happy, then you have nothing to worry about. However, if you were like the majority of us, you're probably thinking that your state drafted will could do with a bit of tweaking, to say the least. The rules have difficulty dealing with modern times. At present, they don't cater for unmarried couples, single parent families, blended families or inheritance tax issues. And they couldn't care less about your friends or your pets. Who cares if they're practically family? If you do decide to write a will, there are a few options to choose from, including DIY, online, and professionally drafted wills. Although we do not advocate the use of DIY or online wills, we do believe in freedom of choice and making informed decisions. 
The Institute Professional Will Writer's Guide to Wills can be downloaded by clicking this link and provide some useful guidance on the subject, as does the Willvolution Guide to Estate Planning. Here's a few points to consider when deciding on which will is right for you. Cost Suitability and quality Safeguards The cost of a will usually reflects the time that has been spent on it. It stands to reason that the lower the cost, the less man hours have been put into producing it. A DIY will is probably the cheapest will of them all in terms of initial outlay. An e-will pack from WH Smith costs around £10, whilst a hard copy will kit costs around £16. Obviously, a DIY will does not come with legal advice, so there is the potential to make costly mistakes and or omissions. If you own foreign property or joint property as tenants in common, have a potential IHT liability, own a business, require property protection or would like legal advice, a DIY will will not be suitable for you. Typically, an online will costs anywhere between £25 to £89 depending on the provider. An online will is basically an electronic version of a DIY will. It usually comes with the promise that it will be checked before it is bound and sent out to you. As with a DIY will, most of the work is done by you. Your details are processed by will writing software, which places your information into a standard pre-written form. Without a consultation, it's impossible for the practitioner who checks the will to know if it's appropriate for you, as no consideration has been given to your individual circumstances, and you do not get the opportunity to ask any questions. Furthermore, failure to properly attest the will, i.e. sign, could lead to invalidity and a successful challenge being brought against your will after your death. An online will is only appropriate for very straightforward and low value estates. Currently will writing is an unregulated activity, so care should be taken when choosing a will writer. A professionally drafted will is the most expensive option in terms of initial outlay but can be far more cost effective in the long run. You should take advantage of any consultations offered to discuss your needs and help you make informed decisions. Make sure that your chosen provider is regulated and insured so that your estate is adequately protected. Remember, if an online will or DIY will goes wrong, your loved ones are the ones who will lose out. If your will is drafted by a regulated professional who is adequately insured, they will be liable to compensate your loved ones for losses incurred as a result of their negligence. Contrary to what you might read or hear, a solicitor is not your only option for obtaining a high quality will writing service. In fact, a recent report commissioned by the Legal Service Board contains the following statement. You can click on the link below to read the full report. It might surprise you to know that solicitors are not required to undertake any specific training to write wills. It does not form part of a solicitor's legal training and any subsequent accreditation is usually gained on a voluntary basis. The fact that a practitioner is a solicitor does not make them any more competent than a good will writer. There are a number of quality service providers in the market. It is a good idea to explore all of your options and choose the provider that you are most comfortable with. You should make sure that the practitioner is regulated, compulsory or voluntary, and has adequate professional indemnity and public liability insurance so that you are protected should anything go wrong. Finally, a will should be reviewed every three to five years and should reflect your current circumstances. Marriage will cancel any existing wills unless they were made in contemplation of marriage. If you made a will after getting married but have since divorced your spouse, the validity of your will remains unaffected, but any gift to your former spouse will be treated as though he or she had predeceased you. We hope that you have found this presentation useful. Feel free to contact us if you require any further information. Thanks for watching.